down on the street and then under Derek Chauvin's knee for more than nine minutes. How did this week compare? Well, this week is more about the analysis of what happened, uh, first from the point of view of the rules that govern how police may use force, and then from the point of view of medical science, uh, the culmination of the week may have been yesterday afternoon when the Hennepin County Medical Examiner, Andrew Baker, restated his official finding that Floyd's death was homicide, that is a death caused by another person, uh, and in this case, Baker said Floyd's underlying... Prepare to keep right, and then take the second turn right. Yeah. Those events are going to cause stress hormones to pour out into your body, specifically things like adrenaline. And what that adrenaline is going to do is it's going to ask your heart to beat faster. It's going to ask your body for more oxygen so that you can get through that altercation. And in my opinion, the, the law enforcement subdual restraint and the neck compression was just... Keep right in a quarter of a mile and then take the second turn right. To have the medical examiner. Well, it's because the defense has really been playing up the contributing factors aspect here, talking about Floyd's drug use, his heart disease, trying to show that uh, Chauvin's knee maybe wasn't directly on Floyd's neck the whole time. And the prosecution is saying, yeah, this death is physiologically complicated, but the action. Now keep right. Are, are what started that chain of events. Uh, you, you probably know that I cover policing, and what I'm struck by this last week or so is how many people in law enforcement have contacted me saying that they're. Take the second turn right and continue to follow Route 8. To uh, Joe Jackalone, who's a retired NYPD detective. Now turn right. Oops. I teach a use of force class at John Jay College, and I think this was going to be a centerpiece of that course going forward. Pardon. What do you think many police departments might be learning from this trial? Well, take the uh, uh, issue of positional asphyxia, the idea that someone can asphyxiate just by being face down with their hands cuffed behind their back. This danger is accepted by a lot of police and trainers, but it's not a universal acceptance. Some trainers resist the idea based on a few laboratory tests that have been done where people have been held in that position and that they've seemed to be fine. I remember right after Floyd's death, a police trainer told me he thought positional asphyxia was a myth. But in this trial, um, there was a lot of attack by experts on the idea that this is a myth. Uh, listen to uh, forensic pathologist Lindsay Thomas yesterday talking about those lab tests and saying that the youngish sort of healthy people in those studies don't have any bearing on the real experience of being cuffed on the street. They were being monitored the whole time. And if at any point they had had significant respiratory or cardiac difficulties, the study would have stopped. And the person volunteering knew that. So it, to me, it 